I don't have time to explain right now, just come over. Oh, and wear a lot of clothes. Why? You'll see when you get here, just hurry.
It's unlocked. Dream? Yeah, it was about some monster peeping up on me and it hit me with like some smoke type stuff. Smoke type stuff? Yeah, I don't really know all the details. But there, guess what I can do with this power? What? Not get bullied anymore? No! Well, actually, yeah, but that's not what I was talking about. What I was saying is that, Derek, we could become superheroes. Superheroes? Okay, X, first of all, you can't even control your powers yet. Second, I don't have powers, so it's just superhero. Singular, not plural. Superhero. True, true. But I'm just like a baby that can't walk. But if you help me train, we'll both be able to walk. Man, you tripping. That don't even make any sense. But if you follow me, it will make sense. Just trust me. Say I do do this. How are we going to get stronger? I train you, you train me. I'm a martial artist, and you're fit. You train my body, I train your skills. Fine. I'm in. All right, let's do this. The Great Shift Debate, Angel versus Devil. In Baltimore, Maryland, a boy named Timmy entered a convenience store. Hurry up, okay? I'm supposed to hang out with my girlfriends and go to the mall and stuff, so make it quick. Do you need anything? No, I'm good. For now. He had to make a very important decision. Should I get the hot chips or the low-fat chips? I need to lose some weight, but I can hit the gym after this. Move, move, move! Do not be indecisive. The healthy ones are the ones for you. No, 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 Timmy. The hot ones. Satisfy your taste buds. I'll send you back to where you came. Don't touch me, boy! Oh. The angel had an idea. He used magic to purify the little fat chips. This made the devil furious. Wait, I have a great idea. Sparkle! Magic! to where they came from. The, the end. end!
Everyone has a passion that they cannot imagine their life without. Mine just so happens to be volleyball. From the moment I step onto the court, all I can do is get lost in the game. From the first whistle of the day to the last, nothing else crosses my mind. I live for the late night practices, the loud, obnoxious cheers, the long bus rides, the tournaments, and the whistles. I live for the way it feels when we beat the other team, knowing that the three extra wind sprints we ran in practice was worth it. I live for the way the team has become my second family, the way the coaches have become my second parents, and the way the court has become my second home. I live for the long-lasting friendships, the feeling I get when I kill the ball, and the kill, the memories both on and off the court, even the bruised knees, hips, and Charlie horses. It's all a part of me. It's just who I am. Off the slide. It's a good block. McCoy. Nine digs, five blocks. Playing at a very high level. My favorite quote, not just pertaining to volleyball, but to life as well, is, Pass the expectations, set the standards, kill the competition.
It's been six years since I entered this place, and I still don't know Medusa's true intentions. So do you feel like your time here has been beneficial to your mental health, 5575? My health? We didn't do some labs to start caring about my health. Oh my dear boy, we will always care for our most precious test subject. <laughs> you mean your guinea pig. I think we're done here. Ah! Wait, what makes me so special? You're the only person to have natural kinetic abilities in hundreds of years. You're an oddity. An idiot. He didn't even notice I took his deactivation device from the NDB. See you soon, 5575. Station C, clear. Station B, clear. Station A, clear. Test subject 5575 is moving west through the facility. Is, is the subject moving at 82 miles per hour? The speed of the target is not of importance. Just make sure it doesn't get out. Well, I've really done it now. You're not going anywhere. You made it quite far through the facility, but not far enough it seems. I guess it's time we formally meet. I am Reginald Khan, the CEO here at Medusa Labs. Medusa Labs is one of the largest buildings in the world, being four miles high. It's possible with our new gravity building technologies, our GBTs for short. Speaking of which, I seem to have such a device in my hands. I wonder what it does to people. <sighs> Wakey wakey, my little echo friend. It's time for you to meet a gruesome end. But of course, that's not guaranteed in the cage, where all you need to survive is hate and rage. For now, it's time to fight on this beautiful starry night. Wow, what a move! I can feel the power from here. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Good one, patient 5575. Nice job, Reggie, but I don't think you're good enough for this. I've actually been collecting air, been able to, well, gather some energy. Now, I'm gonna do the final attack and end this entire thing. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Air drill! Things have taken an interesting turn. Wait, no! This can't be happening. I find everything and everyone around me to always be changing and always being changed, molded and formed slowly and slightly by everything in their surroundings. Every day on your walk home you may find that the wind has blown a new leaf onto the porch where a small kitten remains resting, like it has each time you've passed before. Though I do find that in my own ever-changing circumstances, I've always recalled a certain constant that has accompanied me through my fleet of memories. It's a feeling, a warmth and vibrancy rooting from a certain admiration for things I found beautiful in every stage of my life. That kind of admiration makes you feel like the whole world is giving you a kiss. I would squint my eyes at the streetlights on the highways and rock my head to make the yellow beams dance. I would walk through the gleaming hues trailing from the neon signs downtown, 
I could take every twinkle to heart. It's like a game you can play just about anywhere, helping you to celebrate just exactly what it may mean to be a human. I think that the joy I have felt from this admiration provides me with a sort of solace. A feeling of home. And because of that, I want to make everything I can, in a way, dance like those light beams. In all aspects of my life, I've found that when you feel beautiful, everything becomes more magical. That the world was made for your eyes to indulge on. I think that when you're able to feel your best, the world begins to hold you in an embrace. And everything will keep changing, always changing, and the wind is still blowing right through me, but I hope that when I squint my eyes, no matter where I am, that in me I can still try to find a resonating home. Log one, February, February, February 25th, 2018. My name is Wayne Banga. I'm, I'm, I'm 17 years old. I have been hit. Currently 17 years old. I am. Uh. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay. This is log one of my personal recordings. It's February 25th of 2018. My name is Wayne Banga. I am 17 years old, and I am diagnosed with dramatic disorder. If you don't know what dramatic disorder is, in plain terms, simple terms, it just makes my days super long. And I've been living with it for 17 years, and I'm just getting tired. You know, it's it's not it's not right that I I am born with this disease and. My dad's calling me. Okay, it's recording. Focus. Cool. This is log two of my personal recording. It's still currently February 25th. And last time I left off, off um, talking about what I was diagnosed and what I'm dealing with, with my problems with seeing things very slowly and I guess in a way cinematic. I was thinking about it and I realized that it's not really a big of a problem because I get to see the world in a different way. Um, I get to see it in a, in a very special way, you know. Granted, everything is slower um, and everything is, is going to be different from my point of view. But I think I can make it work. It was just hard, hard realizing that I need to love myself in who I am and love myself in what I can do. You know, be confident, confident in myself. Learning, learning to love yourself is it was a hard task, and I realized this after my first recording. So I guess thank you to myself for recording the first log. While I was at that, um, I was researching online that there's a way to transfer. Um, memories and experiences um, in forms of video. Still currently in this prototype phase, but um, I currently um, just emailed the per researcher um, out in Europe, and he hasn't emailed me back, but hopefully he does. Um, if he does um, email me back, um, I can probably 
find a way to show you guys what I'm, I'm seeing, you know? Um, hopefully it'll go well. Um, you'll find out <laughs> if, 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 there, if it does go well, if, if there's something after this log. So, here we go. Be so hard on yourself when you find yourself dwelling on your past and overthinking all about the misfortune you've had. People sometimes forget that their past is a pathway. A pathway is a journey, and journey takes time. Time is all you have when you feel lost. So please be patient. Something better is on the way.
You see, the journey is reverse. Life puts you back on track, but first overcome the worst. You feel bewildered, defeated, hurt. The past leaves you adrift. But as everyone says, the present is the gift, and the best is yet to come. Move past the past. Take one small step in healing your whole, because it will trigger the leap to heal it whole. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Honestly, like the fact that it's my last big art trip is crazy, and I'm glad that we got to do something as fun as going to Philly. Being a senior, I think I speak for all of us when I say that this trip meant a lot for us. The three of us are family. We, mm -hmm. We've been here since sophomore year. Like, we've grown up together. Mm -hmm. We started from making like <laughs> we started making these awful videos that we didn't even know how to use the editor, and now we're like we barely even know how to use a camera. And now we got two of the best techies in the school, and then me. <laughs> <laughs> So especially since this is our last field trip that we will ever go on as a, as a team and more as a, a big family, I think, and that's what it feels like for me and I'm sure it is for a lot of other people too because we've connected over these four years and I don't think that will ever be broken and this really shows how connected we can all still be especially with our last trip and it was definitely a good experience that I will never forget and I don't ever want to. Maddie, would you like to present what you got? I got chicken tenders and then I was trying to be healthy so I got cucumber and tomatoes and I got macaroni and cheese. Would you like to tell the world what you got? I got two kinds of salad and a soda. I need the give me a knife. So I need a knife. And then there's me. <laughs> well, we're sharing. <laughs> If you just look at it like without being like artsy about it, it's like a bunch of trash everywhere. Right. But like if you look at the art aspect of it, it's mm -hmm. like vibrant and it tells a story too. Cause like didn't he put in names of like his wife and his kids oh, like yeah. all over the place and like all these different meanings and mm -hmm. stuff like that? Yeah. My favorite part was outside because the inside was like really small. Yeah. And Inside small. Was, yeah. It was so interesting though. Yeah, it was, but like going outside was even better.
we've all grown so much though since our first yeah. year here. You can do it! All the way to the top! All the way! Be careful! Don't run right toward us! There's a puddle at the top there! You can't see! You're headed right for the puddle, Melon! Puddle! You're not to the top yet! Six more steps! You're not there yet! Oh my god! You're not there yet! Hold your arms up! Hold your arms up! You're not doing it right! Yeah! I can't see anything. It's the worst quality video ever. This is Markayla. Confused as to why she's awake. Determined to make today better. Despite yesterday. This is Markayla. Contemplating change. If she's good enough. If the thing she does for beauty is worth it. This is Mark Abel. How will they see her? What do they think of her image? What is her image? Who is she? Arkayla is beautiful. She's weird. She's funny. Not afraid of anybody's input. Arkayla is herself. She is unique 
and amazing. Markayla is me. <laughs> Who am I? That's a question I've come across attempting to find an honorable solution. You see, ever since I was a child, my only certainty was that I wanted to be different. Unique, separated from all uniformity, and stand out like a thumbprint. I wanted to find out for myself, investigating what sets me apart as my own significant entity. But what was it? My parents are immigrants, and I speak two languages, but that's great. Maybe it's the fact that I love drawing and painting, a hobby I was doing since I was six. Or maybe it's the little things like my childhood interest in Lego bricks, or my love for reading, or tennis, the different foods I eat. Could you define me by where I live or the places I visit on vacation? Or can it be my inner drive to create, all my free time and my school? Perhaps it pertains to my DNA or my most cherished memories. You see, if I identified with any of these, there wouldn't be any guarantees, because I'm always changing. And maybe that's it, the missing piece I need to find, that I need to admit, because I'm only 16 and who I am now is not a finished painting, but rather a freehand sketch, not permanent and staining. I'm a compilation of people, interests, values, and education. And because all these values are changing so quickly, perhaps the question is not who I am, but who I will be. So I'll grow from the world around me, adding branches to my tree of life, and it grows to make me different, and so it makes me who I am. When we were little, we were asked what we wanted to be when we grow up. We were never sure. As we grew, our dreams ran wild. Some of us dreamed but were awakened by reality, forcing us to abandon our aspirations. But some of us dreamed and never woke up. Those who continue to dream face society's criticisms. to tell us we won't be successful or to find a better career path. You won't make any money with that. Art does not guarantee the success you wish. You have no future. Dear BCPS, we are artists. I am Matt from Tevis. I go by Matt for short. Senior at Eastern Technical High School, class of 2018. I can confidently say that I personally have had an eye-opening creative journey. I'm dreaming to pursue a creative career in film or maybe even dancing. As a senior, I've had the opportunity to reflect on my entire high school life and feel as if our school system and art department could do way better. Being a senior definitely opens your eyes. You start to take a glimpse of the real world. Reality starts to hit. And for me, I realized that by the end of our high school careers, students lack the skill sets they need in order to tackle the real world. Students should be given opportunities to acquire real world skills, especially for those pursuing creative careers. Artists need to be freed from the chains of the classroom. Most of us are going to be doing freelance and client work after high school, yet we aren't taught and equipped with the field skills needed to. We understand schools within the system have different magnet programs and focus on different career paths, but it's a commonly unseen problem no matter what school you attend. An artist within this system is a caged bird. So I talked to multiple art students around the county to make sure I'm not alone in this stand. Uh, my name is Zach Soper. I'm a senior at Eastern Tech High School. I'm in the interactive media program. I'm also in uh, various studio art classes, and this is my fourth year in the Eastern Tech Orchestra. I would say that myself and many students are not 
as prepared as we should be, especially if going into like a freelance kind of work, like we have no idea how budgeting or systems work for that. Luckily, we, we do know the whole process of working with a client, but we've never actually done it before. We just have hypotheticals. So I think having like more internships and more student opportunities to work outside of the school with an actual client base would be very beneficial. So overall, I think that BCPS needs to invest more time and give more attention to the arts department and the talented students within it and help them better prepare for college and help prepare them for the real world rather than just putting them in an art class because it's a course requirement for graduation. I don't think it's handled as seriously as it should be. My name is Caroline Hine. I go to Carver Center for Arts and Technology. I'm a senior and I love art, I always have. I'm planning on pursuing photography in the future. Despite how much students excel in the arts, the budget is still continuing to be cut more and more every year. And I think that that's really unfair to people who would like to pursue an artistic career because they're not being given the same opportunities as people who want to pursue science or sports in the future. And I just wish that the county would take the arts a bit more seriously. My name is Yuri Lartiaga and I go to Parkville High School. I really do think that BCPS should implement more internship and work study opportunity for its students, especially for art students. My name is Madeline McQuillan. I'm a senior at Carver Center for the Arts and Technology, and I've been doing art ever since I was a child, and I've always known that that's what I need to do to feel complete and full in my life. I think that art teaches people critical thinking and problem solving and uh, discipline and hard work that you don't necessarily learn in other, uh, in other academic areas, and I also think that in the arts you can learn a specific form of individuality that isn't encouraged in academia and when you have the opportunity to combine academia with the arts in a school setting you can get a lot of very fulfilling results. Usually when people, uh, when there's a difference in experience you can definitely see it in someone's portfolio but also the colleges that they're applying to are usually understanding of the experience difference and they look more for potential but I think that talking to a lot of alumni from Carver, they all believe that they wouldn't be where they are today without having four extra years of art education with dedicated faculty and amazing resources. With this realization in mind, I decided to act. I was able to get in contact with Greg Heitner, a retired marketing genius who also sees the issue in the system. With his help, I was able to build my own media team, Laser Creatives. With this, we started working for clients. Our first client was Perry Hall High School lacrosse team. Even though we worked for them, it wasn't an official BCPS internship, meaning it doesn't count in the system yet. But we have learned so much more than we could ever have in a classroom. We have done things from shooting hype videos, promotional videos, learning about sponsorships, and aspects of event managing. This is the type of stuff students should be exposed to. Students should be getting fieldwork experience in order to prepare themselves for the real world. And we hope that BCPS hears us out and is able to provide that for their students in the future.
will they do if they find us? They won't find us. What if they do? You'll do what we always do. We'll keep moving. Do you think we'll see any cars? There aren't any more cars. You know that. There's nothing to worry about. safe. 